Hey guys, Cody here, and in this video I kind of want to talk about the style that I tend to use the most, um, and kind of explain it and just talk about the style itself, where it came from, and talk about Gerard Richter. So, a couple of months ago, or actually let me back up a minute, uh, first off if you don't know me, I'm Co my name is Cody, uh, abstract painter, and about... A year and a half ago I started painting and I, I started painting in the style of Jackson Pollock a lot of my videos my most viewed videos are in the Pollock style just because that's kind of where I got started and uh, and I and I tried a lot of different styles I mean if you do abstract you probably tried some other styles too but I've really found you know after some time kind of my niche if you will um, and it's doing straight paintings. That's that's what I love to do. And uh, a lot of the content of the future time lapse videos you'll see will probably be of scrape. Now, the style will kind of vary slightly. Um, but I wanted to talk about Gerard Richter. So earlier this year, I don't know if it's been a half a year, but maybe about a half a year, um, I actually discovered Gerhard Richter. And, you know, I learned about, you know, that he does these scrape paintings and you know he you know he moves it across and and I just found that very fascinating that you know it's it's amazing that he's considered uh Amer like the the b most successful living painter I think it was um just because he's been painting so long he's still alive and he still makes paintings and sells them for money and I just thought that was fascinating, but when I learned his technique, you know, that he scrapes the paint, um, you know, I got into that, I wanted to try it, and um, I started doing it, and I just, I really love that, but it's, it's not quite the same, um, but I wanted to talk about kind of how I make my paintings, both that inspiration and what he does compared to how I make paintings, just to kind of give you ideas, um, because I've been getting some feedback about the scrape paintings that a lot of people have never even really thought about that or heard of it or or whatever it is. So I wanted to talk about that. Um, so first off, let's talk about Gerard. Well, Gerard Richter does the, you know, he's one of those guys that, you know, I don't know if it's a Z or what, but he does those really large paintings. And uh, if you just look up his name, I'll put the name in the description. Um, but Gerard painting Gerard's paintings are not only large but they're scraped in and they're just you know he has this giant I don't know, I think it's plexiglass scraper that like if so if this this large painting that you see on the wall was that he would just take that thing and just scrape that all the way across and I mean this this plexiglass scraper if you look just look him up on YouTube or just look him up in general and you'll he has like a movie out about him actually um, I haven't seen the movie, but I've seen interviews. I've seen him paint and stuff like that. But and he's got this just this humongous freaking plexiglass scraper. And he just, you know, he puts the paint on the scraper and just, it goes. And, uh, you know, he makes these large paintings. And so that I, that actually fascinated me a lot. And after after doing dozens of scrape paintings, I can honestly say, like, that is the style that, that appeals to me, but I don't do the same exact thing. I don't, you know, I don't use the same type of paint. I don't use the same type of thing to scrape. Um, you know, I don't do the same movements or anything, but scraping is, is the type of painting that I do. So anyway, that's what he does. And I'd like to talk about what I do to maybe give you ideas um, that you could use to make your own abstract art. Um, or if after seeing the art that I have, you want to pick that up, totally do that too um but anyway let me just kind of go over it. okay so let's start with let's start with the smallest one first so i'd like to show you this piece this is called in the past and i'm sorry if the lighting is terrible in here i'm standing in my garage it's late at night everybody's asleep uh and i'm standing under these fluorescents so anyway so i'm going to kind of let's see if i can get some good light on it uh just talk about the piece so I'll go back. Maybe I can get some light. It's about. It's probably about as good as it's gonna get. So first off, uh, one thing you need to know is I use gloss enamel. Gloss enamel is basically very shiny house paint. It's what Pollock uh, used when he made his paintings, and I started using it when I was doing the Pollock style. Kind of just never went away from it because it's it's a very challenging. 
uh, paint. It's not very forgiving at all. Um, once it hits something, it usually stains it. I've stained tons of clothes and uh, tiles on my floor and stuff like that because the, the gloss and enamel is just very unforgiving. But anyway, so let's talk about it. So this piece, so the way that I made this piece is um, I, I threw kind of the paint on the edge. And you can see it because these little marks here, these little swirls and stuff, which I like, um, came from the the big, like the paint itself. So when I, I like poured it onto the canvas in loops and it created these loops here. And I have another painting called Distant Memories, which you can really see this in um, on my site. But you can see these loops because this is actually, and I apologize if I shake, it's cold outside. Um, but again, I actually lost my jacket, so. Anyway, so this is from the paint, and then I basically, you know, I took the, once the paint was on there, so I threw most of it on the edge, and then scraped it across. Uh, generally, I scrape with one of two, there's other devices, but one of two main devices that I use. Um, and I'd have to go get them and go off camera to get them. But first is corrugated plastic. Uh, you can get it from like Home Depot. I talk about this a lot in some of my other videos. If you watch my video about in spite of everything, time lapse or something like that, I forget what it's called. Um, you'll see, I think I used the, yeah, I used corrugate, corrugate, corrugated plastic. And what that is is just like, a, it's like a plastic sheet that you can get from like Home Depot. And uh, it's got like the little waves in it, like, you know what I mean? Like corrugated, um, like cardboard, but only plastic. So it's like a plastic sheet. You get it like five, 10 bucks, something like that at Home Depot. And you can just cut it to the shape you want or to the size you want. And so I generally use corrugated plastic or a squeegee. Just use a squeegee, just put the paint on. That's that easy. Uh, so anyway, uh, so I, through, uh, you know, I threw the paint on the canvas uh, in different uh, designs, basically, and then scraped the paint across, and that's why you have these solid lines. Then I went against the grain while it was still wet, and that's why you have these kind of fades here. Uh, it's a little hard to see because of the light, but like, uh, let's see if I can get it. Yeah, you see these fades right here? That is from uh, going against the grain while it was still wet. So that is, uh, that's that piece. Um, I think I just recently put a video out called like Freedom is Messy or something like that. I don't really show it in the video, but if you see the painting on the website, you'll see like these, these dots that go across part of the painting. And that's because <laughs> what you don't know or don't see is when I create a painting on video, generally afterwards, I'll go back and fix it because I feel it's not done and then it looks different on the website than it does in the video but anyway so let's move on uh so that is one so that one you know I, I put the paint on the edges that's what these little loops are I scraped it went against the grain done let's move on to another one that I just did uh last weekend about a week ago um I don't have a I do have a video coming out for it, actually. I think. I'm terrible at editing. But anyway, so this one is called Arizona Sunsets. It's actually, like, a really cool piece. I, I like it, actually. It's pretty clean for the most part. Um, it's got a little bit of noise at the end. Uh, but, yeah, this is a really simple piece um, that I actually like a lot. Uh, I can't get that. There we go. There we go. That's better. So not having that, that light on it. Um, so this is the piece. So this one was actually very simple. Uh, so all I did, honestly, was I literally just poured paint kind of in lines, but really just in big blobs in two places, like at the end and then about halfway, because I already know that the paint isn't, if I scrape it all the way down, uh, it's going to run out part of the way through. So I poured it both at the end and then about halfway. And I did that with all the colors, right? And then a little bit of some of the other colors kind of just like dotted in on the edges and stuff to cover the edges and 
and through the you know the ends and stuff like that but just to uh just to fill the whole paint right so i did end and then halfway down and then i scraped the whole thing all the way down right from end to end it's that easy uh on this one i don't think i have it over here it's probably over there but uh i used corrugated plastic on this thing just from end to end and i just went over a couple of times until i knew that one the whole canvas was covered um and two where it was a design that i was happy with okay so i act the first like two passes it was actually very clean and what i mean by that is like there wasn't this work right here this this busyness of the other colors or like the the melting it was actually like just really smooth clean lines all the way down and and it actually looked pretty good but then i was like it's too perfect right it's almost like it's almost too perfect right and uh it didn't and sorry if it lost focus but it almost like it didn't have any character so i went over a few more times it kind of started to when i when you bring it back over and go over it again it starts to kind of blend the colors and they start to lose their edge so I stopped after the after like the fourth or fifth time but that is how I created that so I just took the corrugated plastic I didn't go against the grain I just put the paint at the end and in the middle and just scraped it over a couple of times until the whole painting was finished uh, covered and in, in full so that is that one like I said there should be a video coming soon uh, on the process of that now last is this one um, I won't sell this one let's see if I can get it better thing without the light uh it's hard to see but yeah so this one was paint and then scraped and pulled across paint scraped pulled across and i just did that a couple of times with a bunch of different colors um you can see like orange and yellow and red and and i won't sell this one because i'm not happy with it um but yeah this was that's the same thing i just actually this was a bunch of leftover paint uh i think i have a video on that one too is uh i don't know what it's called but uh i think it's on there just look for these colors if i remember the name then i'll i'll put it in the link in the description but anyway uh so yeah so this one i just threw a bunch of leftover paint i had on there and then scraped it a few times across and that was it um, but that's pretty much it so i just want to talk about you know kind of the process the like painting like Gerard if you you know if you're thinking of trying to paint like that this is just how I do it there's more videos about it um, if you're looking to buy a painting like Gerard Richter's they're a lot cheaper than his um, and I can make a custom one but regardless I'm really glad that you watched this video I thank you for it uh, lots more videos to come and uh, just really appreciate your time so you uh, you have a good rest of your day and uh, take care